Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is all about these books will self-destruct in 12 months. Revisited. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have a way too many books. And in the interest of getting through some of my way too many books that I'd had for too long or that I didn't really feel like reading anymore, last year, at this time of year, I talked about 14 books that I wanted to get read within a year, otherwise they were going to have to leave the giant TBR for good in a self-destructing manner. So I thought today we would revisit, it's been a year, uh, what happened with these books. As I said, there were 14 books on my list and most of them were just books that I didn't really feel reflected what I wanted to be reading anymore or they were books I'd had for a really, really long time and did really want to get to. The list was pretty much divided that way. Of the 14 books, I have unhauled five without reading them. I am currently reading one of them. I have DNF'd one of them and I have read five. That leaves two books that are not yet read on the list and are therefore liable to self-destruct. So let's have a breakdown of what the books were and what happened to them. The first book that was on my list of books that were going to self-destruct was the only non-fiction on the list and it was My Bookie Work by Russell Brand. Now I had put My Bookie Work on this list because I didn't feel like I actually really wanted to read it but it was one that my mum had passed on to me once she'd read it and I just never got round to it. So what happened to this one is that I um, put it on one of my try chapters in November because it was non-fiction and I actually decided to unhaul this one after about a chapter so yeah that was the first one and that got unhauled. The second book on the list unfortunately is one of the books that I didn't get to and that was The Last Girl by Jane Casey. And there's nothing really drawing me to this book, but there's also nothing really wrong with this book. It's, it's a book that I'm almost tempted to keep just because I might read it sometime, but it's crime fiction and it's over 400 pages. And in the whole year, I've not been drawn to reading it once. I don't think I've added it to any TBRs. I've made no effort to read this, so it does need to leave the giant TBR now. I believe when I mentioned it in these Books Will Self-Destruct video, I had a comment from the lovely Janelle over at Too Fond of Books saying that this is actually part of a series and that the series is quite good. I did make an effort to look in the library for the earlier books in this series because this is book three and I really do like to start at the beginning with series where possible. I couldn't find book one or two, and so I've pretty much given up on this book. But what I will say about this is I am going to um, donate this or pass this on to somebody who's actually going to read it and enjoy it rather than it sit on my shelf for more years. But if I ever do get the urge to read this series, I think the detective is Detective Constable Maeve Kerrigan. And if I get the urge to read that series I would like to start at book one and I would probably just borrow them from the library or get them on audiobook. So unfortunately The Last Girl will be self-destructing. Book number three on the list was Manhattan Is My Beat by Jeffrey Deaver. I did get to this book, it was my first Jeffrey Deaver and I read it in October. And this was fine. I, I think it's one of Diva's earlier books. I thought it was interesting the way he wrote a female main character. Probably not 100% my cup of tea. It probably will get unhauled and passed on because it's not a book that I would ever reread again, but I enjoyed it while I was reading it. The fourth book on the list is the other one that I actually didn't get to. I've made no real effort to get to this either. That was Along Came a Spider by James Patterson. So many years ago, I thought that I would really like to try James Patterson. And I thought I would start at the very beginning. So I bought Along Came a Spider in a secondhand shop. I absolutely used to love the secondhand shop that I got this from. I believe on a holiday or something, I read the first 10 chapters and I just 
then when I got back from holiday I think I picked something else up and never returned to it so nothing is really drawing me to a long coma spider I've put it on a couple of TBRs I've never got to it so this one is going to have to leave the TBR as well the difference with this one is that it is going to be staying in the house but not on my TBR because it's going to move onto my husband's shelves. He has listened to a lot of James Patterson's I think and he would like to keep this in case he reads it so that is staying in the house but it's unhauling from my giant TBR because I didn't get to it so it has to self-destruct. Next couple of books were a pair of books, Lord of Misrule and Carpe Corpus. Both of these books are from the Morganville Vampire series by Rachel Kane. I think I've read about four of this book series already and I tried one of these to see if I still wanted to continue with the series for a try a chapter back in June and I decided to one haul both of them because I just really couldn't be bothered to get back into the series basically the time had passed for reading that so they got unhauled um, without me reading them hopefully we're eventually going to get to some books that I read so the next book on the list was Memory by Margaret Mahi this at the time was probably the joint longest serving book on my TBR I had bought this I think at a book fair at school it was there for over 20 years old that is a very long time to own a book um, without reading it. I had attempted to read it before, I think probably on that first reading I just got a bit bored. So reading this again as an adult and actually finishing it, I did enjoy this book. It's a very strange book to be marketed as a sort of teen or at a sort of teen audience. I think this would appeal much more to adults who don't mind a teenager being like a key character in the story. It's kind of about an old lady who suffers from dementia and the relationship that Johnny, the other main character, strikes up with her. Um, he's a teenager, he's a bit wayward, his sister has died and he's in a really bad place. So they kind of help each other out in a weird sort of way and this was a nice book. I wouldn't say it was a favourite read of all time but I think Margaret Mahi is a really good writer and I thought some of the themes she explored in this were really interesting. It obviously wasn't interesting to my early teen self but it was interesting to my 30 plus year old self. So yeah I enjoyed reading Memory. I'm glad I finally read it. It's no longer the longest serving book on my TBR. I read that one back in May and I probably will keep that for sentimental reasons. Next up was Eden Close by Anita Shreve. This is one of three Anita Shreve books I had on my shelf. All of them acquired from my mum when she was getting rid of them and this is probably the one that was the shortest but also probably the one that I felt the least connected to and I did try to read this this month in January as a TBR veteran for the Past and Future Readathon but I DNF'd this, I can't remember how many pages I read, wasn't very many. I definitely read all of chapter one and they were very long chapters, um, I think that was all I read so I, I read about 33 pages. I know that's not really giving it much of a chance before I DNF'd but it was so early in the year I thought I just don't want to spend this year reading like mediocre books that I don't really enjoy. I'm sure somebody else will enjoy this a lot more. I've DNF'd this, it will be leaving the giant TBR and pretty much self-destructing. So I also unhauled The Long Firm. I think this was by someone called Jake Arnott. And I unhauled this back in June when I did a try a chapter and unhauled most things. Then we come to The Rapture. I read this in January. This uh, took the place of Eden Close as a TBR veteran for the Past and Future Readathon and I'm not sorry I read this but it wasn't as much of a sort of end of days blockbuster as it was billed as. It does say that on the front. Yeah it was not apocalyptic enough for me until the very very end but it was interesting enough to keep me reading. Glad I read it. Wouldn't read it again, so this is going to be leaving the house as well. Next up, we have Niceville. I unhauled this in a much more unsuccessful try a chapter in August, 
and no regrets about that either. It was a very strange book. I think this book was by someone called Carsten Stroud. I thought it was, seemed very, very confusing and I had no desire to persevere with it. Again, it wasn't a book I'd bought, it was a book I'd acquired from my mum, so that's already left the house, it's gone. Next up, we have the book that I'm actually currently reading, and that's Shift by Hugh Howey. This was one of the ones on the list I really did not want to give up on because I have read the first book in this trilogy, it's the Silo trilogy, and the first book was called Wool, and I read Wool and I really enjoyed it. I started this book on a holiday many years ago now, and I read the first 80 pages, and then again, I didn't pick it up again. Uh, I'm not sure why, because I've started it yesterday, immediately read those first 80 pages again that I'd already read. I'm currently nearly 200 pages in on the second day of reading it, so I am confident that this will be finished by the end of January, definitely by the time this video goes out. So this one was a success. If I enjoy it, I'm likely to keep this on my shelves because I might need to look at it again if I get the third book, which is called Dust. I'm enjoying this one so far and it hasn't self-destructed. Next up, another one that I did read was The Art of Murder by Michael White. I read this one in December. <laughs> this was fine. It was a crime fiction, had some Jack the Ripper elements. It had a killer who was recreating works of surrealist art um, in their murder scenes. I didn't love it, so <laughs> it is leaving the house as well, but I have read it. Quite a big unhaul from this list. The final one on the list was The Woven Path by Robin Jarvis. Jarvis. I had had this at least as long as Memory by Margaret Mahi, possibly even slightly longer. So over 20 years, maybe even 25 years, this had been owned by me. And this is the first in the Weird Museum trilogy, and this book was really, really good. Probably so far, unless Shift is amazing, this is my favourite book on this whole list, and I thought it was really excellent. It's obviously written for children, but it is quite scary, and also I would say that this trilogy goes down a route that I don't think would be, like, great topics for children now. I don't know. I thought this one was great. This one has a time travel to uh, the London Blitz, and I thought it was really, really excellent. I read that in March, for middle grade March, and on the strength of that, I did look out for, get, and read um, book two, The Raven's Knot by Robin Jarvis, and book three, The Fatal Strand by Robin Jarvis. I don't think this trilogy finished up as strongly as it started out, but I did think The Fatal Strand was really, really good. Uh, I thought The Raven's Knot was probably the weakest in the trilogy, but it certainly had good elements to it. And all in all, I do recommend The Weird Museum trilogy even though it is, as the title suggests, very weird. That was definitely my favourite book out of my list of books that were going to self-destruct, 100%. I think I've learnt from this experience, setting myself a list of books that were going to self-destruct, because it has taught me to largely believe in my convictions. So most of these that I was pretty sure I wasn't going to want to read anymore, I didn't end up reading. I unhauled them or they've just languished on my bookshelf for another year. So of the ones I read, I only really loved The Woven Path. I quite liked Memory and as I've said, I'll probably keep it for sentimental reasons. I will keep the Robin Jarvis books and I will probably keep Shift. I was largely right when I picked this list that these were not books that were reflective of my current tastes in reading. I haven't made a list for this year. And the reason for that is because I have set myself quite a lot of lists already. Um, there was the 23 crime books I wanted to read in 2023. There were the 23 classics I wanted to read in 2023. Over half of both of those lists are on my giant bookshelf. So I need to concentrate on getting those read. If I haven't read those by the end of the year, I will maybe do a bit of a conclusion to the 23 for 23 and think about whether, especially with the crime books, whether some of them do need to go or not. Last year I definitely learned more about my evolving reading tastes. I definitely learned more about unhauling books when 
you just don't want to read them anymore. Going forward into 2023, I do want to still sometimes do a try a chapter so that I can try some books that I've got, see what I want to read next, see what I want to get rid of. I think that's I think that worked really, really well on the whole. And I also do want to just continue to be mindful that when I'm reading a book, is it a book that I'm actually going to really enjoy? And if it's not, can I let go of it? Can I DNF it? That's all for my These Books Will Self-Destruct in 12 months. If you've enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I would love it if you would leave me a comment down below. Let me know, have you read any of these books? Do you think I should change my mind about self-destructing those final two books? And uh, how do you feel about unhauling books? Thanks for watching today and I do hope you will join me again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.